Bonjour. Me again, Nessie. Purveyor of Paris Unknown and creator of an online cabinet of curiosities called Messy Nessie Chic. Here's my motto, don't be a tourist. Which is why in this web series we will not be going up the Eiffel Tower, or queuing up for the Notre Dame, or eating pastries, or... Well, okay, maybe I might be eating a couple of pastries. But my point is, I'm going to show you the unloved oddities, the hidden nooks and the forgotten places, the really good stuff. And maybe there'll be some cheese. Even the truest Parisian needs an occasional break from the romance of this limestone jungle. But if you're hoping for a glitzy tour of the Chateau de Versailles, well, you've kind of taken a wrong turn somewhere. To escape the crowds, a messy messy day trip of choice involves a ghost town. No, really, an actual ghost town. We're headed 30 minutes north of the city, to Paris's suburban Ville Fantôme. That's ghost town in French, by the way. Goussainville is a bit of a time capsule, where not much has changed since the mid-20th century, except for one deafening adjustment. This was once a peaceful and prosperous farming village. But in the early 70s, the country's biggest and baddest new airport, Charles de Gaulle, moved in right next door. And the new neighbor's noise level was kind of a problem. The sound of tweeting birds was suddenly replaced with thundering jet engines. For residents, living under the flight path of Europe's busiest airport became unbearable. Occupying one of the vacant houses on the main square since 1997, an unlikely bookstore is just about the only place still breathing life into this village. With thousands of second-hand treasures stacked to the ceiling in someone's old home. Monsieur? Mm -hmm. Pourquoi vous avez choisi Goussainville pour... Euh, en fait, moi, j'ai pas réfléchi, j'ai pas vraiment choisi. C'est... Euh, <coughs> je bossais pour un libraire qui voulait euh, faire un village du livre ici, comme euh, en Angleterre et en Moai. Mm -hmm. euh, donc, il a trouvé que l'idée de, de, de transformer ces maisons vides en librairie, c'était une bonne idée. Et donc, euh, bah, ça n'a pas donné les suites. Il a eu juste ce local-là et qui m'a employé à l'époque, et puis euh, j'ai pas réfléchi, je me suis mis en route et euh, j'ai continué l'aventure. Vous ne vous sentez pas trop seul ici Si. Non, ça dépend des jours. Avion. Maintenant j'ai récupéré. Hey, Henry Henry Miller. That's Nicolas, the only shopkeeper crazy enough to set up a dying trade in a dying town. Bridget Jones <laughs> And besides his impressive collection of 90s rom-com novels, not surprisingly, this is a pretty good place to find books on other French ghost towns and obscure places. Sépulture, cimetière de Paris, Paris introuvable, un guide de Vincennes. Bon, c'est un truc euh, très par une anglaise aussi. Paris, Paris secret insolite aussi. How much money do you have on you? Oh, give me your money. Uh. Goussainville has had some seriously bad luck with airplanes over the years. A year before the airport even opened, a Russian prototype supersonic airliner, the Soviet answer to the Concorde, crashed into the town during an air show, destroying 15 houses and a school that was luckily closed on that day. And then the airport opened. The incessant boom of passing planes was a constant and terrifying reminder of what might happen again. And that was the final nail in the coffin for Goussainville. By 1974, not surprisingly, most residents thought, f*** this, and skipped town. But the airport wasn't allowed to bring in the bulldozer, partly thanks to the protected Renaissance church at the village centre, and a few stubborn residents left behind. In the meantime, hundreds of homes have simply been walled up and forgotten. At the heart of the village lies the skeleton of a once grand 19th century chateau. As the town's wealthiest family, my guess is they would have been among the first to abandon their home in Goussainville, unable to tolerate the noise of jumbo jets flying above their garden parties.
biggest stinging nettle I've ever seen in my life. That's a real shame. They, uh, they walled up the main door. Each time I come back to visit, the house seems to be in worse shape than before. It's been the victim of fire, countless vandals, and the interior frescoes are now long lost to the elements. So imagine you were trying to have a nice summer picnic out here, and then suddenly <laughs> jumbo jets come flying over every five seconds. I think it would get quite annoying. The powers that be are still trying to figure out what to do with this lonely town. Social housing, arts colony, zombie film set. Ah, jeez. For now, the future remains unclear. But being so close to Paris, it may only be a matter of time until it falls victim to the wrecking ball. So visit Paris's suburban ghost town while you still can, folks. It might not have the glitz and glamour of Versailles, but you'll definitely still have the place all to yourself. Stay curious and join me down the rabbit hole on the next episode. Also, don't forget about my book, Don't Be a Tourist in Paris. It's the one with the stripper pole on the cover, and it's all about Paris Unknown. Find it at shop.messynessychic.com. See you next time. I hope you enjoyed wandering around with me. And if you'd like some more, I recommend that you subscribe to the Facebook page, Messy Nessy Chic. And I'll be waiting with a glass of wine, of course.